So I'm going to be opening up one of the previous projects, which uh, was a car uh, that I had shown you in one of the introduction sessions. And I'm going to be basically going to load this into the tree section or like that. And I'm going to be calling this car demo. The template that I'm going to be choosing is going to be Roto and the workspace can be default. This is fine. All of this is fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and say okay. Now, once I'm inside the uh, document, I have these set of controls and these are very specific to this roto node all right so if i don't have this selected if i select the output you notice that the nodes are gone okay so what are these controls or how basically to go about using them and let's look at uh, very specifically these three controls uh, which are the B spline, the X spline, and the Bezier. Now, the Bezier tool was, in fact, one of the first tools that was introduced, and it's uh, relatively old and has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. So, uh, it doesn't find many of its usage in day to day rotoscopy workflows, but yes, it does have some advantages. So, uh, we'll be talking about all of them now to first uh, Start to use it. You first need to understand how to navigate inside the viewport and The way you do it is that you if you want to pan around you can just simply middle click and drag so I'm just simply uh, clicking on that scroll wheel on your mouse and Just dragging it left right or just around, dragging it around like that. So that's how you can pan things around. Now, if you hold down the spacebar key, right, you can do the same. And I'm not clicking on any of the mouse buttons right now. Okay, I'm just holding down the spacebar and moving my mouse. So that's also something that you can do. Now, if you hold down the spacebar and if you uh, hold down the shift key right alongside, you can basically zoom in and zoom out okay so that's what uh, it, it might just take you some time to get used to it so what you can do is you can move your mouse so let's say if you want to zoom into this car handle or let's say to this uh, patrol or the gas tank so you can bring your mouse here hold on the space bar bring your mouse here hold on the shift key and then uh, you know just pan it around or you can um, hold on the space bar and then zoom inside it uh, pan it across like that and then just zoom into it if you find that a little tricky what you can do is you can uh, use these two controls separately that's also an option uh, I find this a little bit easier I leave that to you to decide which uh, one is much convenient for you so what you can also do is you can just use the spacebar pan it around bring to the point and then hold down the shift key and I'm not holding down the spacebar now I just now need to middle click and then drag inside so that's one of the other ways of doing it so I'm spacebar dragging it that's for panning that's option number one you can even middle click and drag to pan around that's also there and then you can hold on the shift key and again middle click and drag right so i'll reiterate these controls one more time so to zoom in what you could do is you can uh, basically go about clicking on the middle click button of the mouse and pan around or let's say if you want to zoom into a place you can hold on the shift key and then click and drag so that's how you can zoom into it
okay so i hope that uh, this functionality is clear to you uh, because this is going to come in very handy so just get used to it using the shift key and the middle mouse and most of your work will be done with that okay now if we talk about the bezier tool which is this so what you could think about it as one of those pen tools that we have inside photoshop okay and it functions very much like that so what you need to do is you need to just click once and then click on the on the next time and then drag to basically uh, give it some tangent handles these are your control handles right and then the direction in which you are dragging the next time wherever you click it's going to form a curve like that and then I'm dragging this way now if I come here it's going to be on this curve so if I just click like that and probably I'm doing a very rough shape here now when you come down to this uh, point you see that this there's a circle alongside the uh, cursor right and that's uh, telling you that it's ready to close the path now so just something to notice now you might notice as well that there's this uh, line right here and that's the feather control so if I just click on it and drag you can see that I'm actually uh, adding some feather to it and the way you would uh, be able to see the effect is by just tapping on the A key you see that uh, these are sharp all around and if I just hit the S key you can see that the outlines are gone and the, the control handles are gone and you can see that the uh, feather is coming through nicely now okay so that's how you can basically do it all right now let's say for example you wanted to uh, add feather to all of these right so you could have a feather to this a feather to this you could do them individually or you can uh, let me just go ahead and undo them by hitting Control z what i can do is i can select all of them and then uh, just hover over any one of these lines and then drag it out so that is going to give you again that feathering which we were talking about some time back okay so that's how the feathering options work now I'm going to just go ahead and delete this because it's not a very uh, refined shape now let's uh, focus our attention on the seat part here and here I am going to take you inside the next tool which is the B spline tool okay now uh, the difference comes up uh, if you notice here that if I take this uh, uh, the Bezier tool and if I just click and start drawing a shape I am getting this in the timeline and I have opened the timeline by clicking on the by tapping on the F1 key on the keyboard right if I hit the F2 key I am going to uh, activate or uh, you know just open up the object list here okay uh, by hitting the F3 key what I'm going to get is the uh, full view of the viewer here okay now if I hit the F4 key everything else all the other panels will go away and all I will have is the viewer and the timeline right no other nonsense there and if I hit the F5 key 
I'm going to get uh, the trees view in almost a full screen view which is very helpful at times when you have a lot of nodes uh, piled up together and then if I hit the F6 key you are going to get a full screen view of the trees section or the panel right so that's uh, how it is F1 for activating the timeline F2 to uh, basically go about opening the object list F3 to full screen uh, to toggle the full screen view of the viewer F4 to only have the viewer and the timeline F5 to have the to have all other panels go away and only the viewer and the trees panel would be available to you if you hit the F6 key you are going to get the trees view in a full screen mode okay so that's basically how uh, the interface is organized for you okay now when we talk about the Bezier tool right here what happens is so in comparison to the other tools here uh, the Bezier is actually one of the first tools that was launched uh, and anywhere that you are designing or let's say you're making selections for example Adobe's Photoshop or Adobe's Illustrator and in fact any of the tools uh, out there whether it's for 3D, 2D, for visual effects, After Effects, Premiere all of those softwares do have the Bezier tool because it's so useful all right but then inside of silhouette it has its own set of uh, advantages and disadvantages and the downside the disadvantage is that uh, you when you try to animate a mask and that is something that I'm going to be introducing you to a, uh, in a later chapter so what happens is that you have to be very cautious that you need to animate uh, the uh, so when you're working with Bezier tool you're basically going to be animating two things one is going to be the control handle and then the second would be the curvature all right so uh, both of them are going to be animated separately all right so right now as you can see I just drew a control handle here and when I'm moving this both the control handles are moving just like a seesaw right I'm moving this one and this one is also moving in the opposite direction now in order to have it move individually you would need to uh, hold on to the alt key on your keyboard or the option key on a Mac keyboard and then you'll be able to uh, finalize the shape and this technique is going to be true in all the three tools right here okay but the only uh, downside to the Bezier is that you have to be very cautious with it because you have to animate two parts of it the uh, anchor point which is this where you place your point and the control handle so both of them have to be animated simultaneously otherwise you're going to lose your shape all right it's not it's not going to look good okay so that's something to note about uh, the Bezier tool now moving on to the B spline uh, and this is one of those tools which is uh, used quite often in the workflow so let's just uh, first draw out a shape here and then uh, you'll see why I was saying it so as you can already see what's happening is that when I click here and then I click here it's a straight line okay but then when I click third time it makes a curvature right if you can see this in red if you're not able to see this in red let me just uh, go back and change the layer color to something more prominent maybe a black should be visible 
better. So this is the part which is controlling the curvature right here. Okay, and this is the uh, beginning point and this is the end point and this is the part where it's uh, getting curved. Okay, so that's how the B spline functions. Okay, and let me just draw the entire shape and then you would be able to understand clearly what I mean by that. So if I if I have to uh, make a curve here, I have to be very mindful that okay, I'm going to if I'm let's say starting here, and this is where I want a curve, so I'll need a point here, right? And then I click here, and then I can go straight like that, and then come on this shape, and then come back, and then maybe. Uh, that's okay. We'll rectify this in a in a in, in a while. Don't worry about that too much. Okay, and then you can come back here and then close the shape out. Okay, so <clears throat> what has happened is that it's given you various options. All right. So let's say if I want a corner here. So what I can do is I can just select this point, right click on it, and uh, then we can say corner. Okay, so this is going to convert into a corner. Here, what we have is an option to convert this into a smooth curve because the seat is definitely a curve. And I can continue doing that to match the overall uh, outline of the seat right here. And then do a thing here now this is somewhere that I feel that there should be a corner so let's set it to a corner maybe and hit a to have a clear view of things this is also going to be a corner so I can just convert this into a corner again sorry you need to select it and then put it onto a corner uh, this the well, you can uh, have it to center, which means that uh, it's not going to give you a corner. It's just going to have it average out in the middle. Okay, and then let's convert this also to a corner. Maybe no. Okay, let's let's put it back to a curve. If that is something that's suiting the purpose. Uh, let's adjust this one right here and I feel that this is something that that should be a little tight and this can be a little easy okay so that's my basic shape and I'm enabling the uh, alpha I'm checking the alpha by hitting the A key you can also do that if you want right and that's how my alpha is looking like so if I hit back A again you can see that I have pretty nicely drawn the shape yay I'll go ahead and uh, rename the shape here and I'll call this uh, seat And this is the left side, so I'll start off my naming with left seat. And these kind of things are quite helpful in the long run. Just name your objects nicely. Okay. Next up is the X spline tool, which is basically a much advanced version of uh, the B, B spline here. Now, what does an X spline have different is that you have an option. So, let's say if I draw this, let me show you in fact what uh, 
Uh, and how is it different? Okay, so if I just right click, uh, now you can see that that curvature thing is consistent with this between the X plane and the B plane. That's there. Uh, the feather is also there. Now, what the difference is that if I just right click here, I get another option which says cardinal. Okay, this was not available in B spline. Now, what does cardinal do is that you see that this curvature is uh, happening because of these uh, straight lines, the tangents, right? It's acting like a tangent to it. So if I hit cardinal, it's going to essentially be controlled over the top of this point, right? If you understand what I mean, like that, see. So this is going on top of this point. So you can, at times it becomes very easy to have this uh, control the entire shape that you're trying to draw. And at times you can e even work with this. So mostly uh, in production workflows, uh, artists prefer the X-Spline tool. And then the second one is the B-Spline. So they are constantly switching between these two shapes. Uh, another two shapes that we have available here are the circle and the square. Uh, I won't say that they are totally redundant, but uh, they are here for reason, particular reason that uh, let's say if I have some circular uh, shapes like this wheel, I can probably draw out a circle like that and uh, maybe just reposition it and then even scale it out and adjust the scaling, the overall scaling and the size. So uh, in those these kind of situations, it's actually quite helpful. Okay, so uh, that's why I was saying that it's not to say that uh, uh, this is totally redundant. They are there, still there for particular reason. Um, and I don't think that they're going to throw these two, to two tools uh, out anytime soon because these two are one of the very basic shapes uh, that give you uh, efficiency when you're working with shapes which are circular or square or rectangular in structure. Okay, so that's basically about these three tools, right? And in the next uh, session, I'm going to be taking you into how to basically go about uh, animating your masks. Okay, so see you there.